Hey, listen, um, welcome once again to Skinny Black's Lounge. And as we always do about this time, suck a shit. Man, I was thinking. Uh-oh. I don't often do this. Uh, I rarely give any relationship advice because two reasons. Uh, number one, people don't take it. And then number two, everybody grown. Okay, that's one of my rules of life. Everybody grown. So, you know, let grown people do what they do. But I was having a conversation and I was trying to explain this uh, to a young lady that this is as uh, simple as chicken and biscuits. Right? So we all, we've been black our whole lives. You know, black people love fried chicken. Go to KFC. It's called Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now, they got the size. Remember the mean greens? They don't have those no more, but I used to like right. the mean greens. Right. They got the green beans, got yeah. the mac and cheese, the nasty-ass fries they got up there, and Horrible. they got the biscuits. The biscuit is the number one side. Yes, sir. But it's still a side. It's not called Kentucky Fried Biscuits. It's called Kentucky Fried Chicken. And see, what's going on right now is a lot of these ladies, they, they the two-piece, breast and wing, but they really a biscuit. <laughs> And I don't care how much butter and honey you put on it, you still a side dish, right? And this is what happens when these biscuits get two-piece added to. So you delusional biscuits, you on some sucker shit. <laughs> oh man, I don't know where you get this shit, bro. <laughs> I got one more, man. All right, cool. Just roll into it. All right, cool. As we always do about this time, suck a shit. I was, I was, I was really thinking about this one. Uh oh. So, your, your oldest, my guy, son, you know, he's an HBCU grad, soon to be two time, right? Mm hmm. So I was thinking about that, man. And remember back in the day, they used to have the L.A. Classic. Yes. At the Coliseum. Yes. They would have the two HBCUs come out yep. here and play and everybody be in the Coliseum. It was the Black Family Reunion. Yes, you know? sir. Yes, sir. But here's what's crazy about the HBCU, the L.A. Classic. People, the stands would be half empty during the game. Then at halftime, it's packed to see the bands. Yeah. Right? So people weren't interested in the game. They was interested in the band. Right? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, that's how we live our lives as black people. Mm. Can't tell you nothing about crypto. Can't tell you nothing about education, relationships. But we know love and hip hop, Miami, LA, Cleveland, Puerto Rico. <laughs> We on TMZ.com every morning, like that's the damn daily news. We can gossip with the best. Look, we got church, uh, church lady level gossip skills. Ms. We Benita. all love those marching bands and halftime shows, but we not about the game that's really going to help our people. You HBCU LA classic niggas is on some sucker shit. Dope. Got one more. Wow. Boy, you went deep on that one. Hey, that was that was nice. Mm -hmm. That was nice. <clears throat> All right. All right. Ahem. As we always do right about this time, suck shit. Man, I was thinking, man. Uh-oh. I was with my mom, hanging out with her, and my mother's an avid shopper. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's a shopping ninja, as a matter <laughs> of fact. And uh, she was talking about how she had to wean herself off of QVC, that she would find herself on QVC at all times. Now, well, Q, you know, QVC is the shopping channel, uh -huh. and you can uh, get paprika or sweaters at 3 in the morning. This is true. They got everything, right? Or watch. And so I was thinking, that's how many of our women live their lives. 
Mm. They have this game plan. I'm going to mess around in my 20s. I'm going to do I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to travel. And then at 35, I'm going to go on QVC and I'm going to get a husband. But the cable ain't working. And that's why many of y'all are still alone. And I normally don't even say anything to y'all. <sighs> but your QVC plan ain't working. So I'm sorry, sisters. I love you. But the QVC sisters, you on some sucker shit. And there it is. <laughs> Man, come with that heat today. <laughs> I love it. All right, cool. Welcome once again to Skinny Black's Lounge. Um, my name is Rob, a.k.a. Skinny Black. And across from me, we have my man. JT. Period of silent. Hi, Mom. Yeah, and next to JT, we have our uh, regular guest. Yeah, um, Rennie's not here today for, for this one, but that's cool. Shout out to Rennie. Before we even begin, shout out, shout out to Rennie. He's uh, on a paper chase. I love you, Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> My man. So <clears throat> let's get into it. So today is kind of a special day for us at Skinny Black's Lounge. Um, we are making a pivot. And so that pivot is toward clarity. And so when I say that pivot is toward clarity, there are three things that we want to be clear about that we uh, shoot to uh, shift and transform uh, in our community as black men. The first thing is uh, we shoot to change the narrative of black men, uh, the erroneous narratives of black men, the negative narratives of black men. Second thing is, in changing those narratives, then we change the narratives of our uh, black relationships and our black, especially the black relationships with our black women. And in shifting those narratives and shifting those relationships, we invariably change the um, our black communities and strengthen our black communities. So I know it's a high bar, but shit, we we should shoot for that. So <clears throat> in that, there are a couple of things that you'll see different here at Skinny Blacks Lounge. Uh, that we will start at some point in our show, we may even start out the show doing something that we call data points. So in order to uh, cut through the rigmarole and the bullshit of, of how uh, people may feel about our show and feel about our content, we'll just start out with some data and we'll just work from there. So uh, you'll see more data points, you see more um, connects and links to websites, to papers, to articles, to clips that will scholarly clips that will will we'll start our conversation from um, today won't be that day. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll all we'll reference folks um, in the field. Uh, and when I say the field, another introduction, an introduction to the black manosphere, black manosphere. Um, uh, some people may call it red pill. Some people may call it whatever uh what it is uh what the way we see it is basically standing on our square as black men and and standing up for truth and in standing on that truth of who we are then we invariably change the narrative of how people see us through our actions through our words uh through our commentary um so we reference people we will reference people dr tia Sign johnson the black pill gnostic um, Green Gorilla, Kevin Small, uh, Kevin Samuels, uh, Noop, shout out, um, uh, Fit and Fresh, Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews. It's a, it's, it's a bunch of cool cats out there who are doing some really good work on, on social media that they're out there doing yeoman's work, been doing the big lifts to really change how we are seen in, in this society. Um, so I encourage everyone to jump out there and, and check out those and support those cats too. Um, before I get into this next piece, uh, would you like to add anything to that? No, nah, man, you don't need no Lowry's on that. That's well seasoned. Okay, cool. Today is another, also a special day because 
One thing we haven't done uh, up to this point, uh, I don't know what episode this will end up being <laughs> when this is aired, but uh, at some point, uh, at no point in time up to now have we given out origin stories. And so today you'll get a chance, uh, a peek, sneak peek into um, into the, into our experiences in life that brought us here and made us who we are today, uh, as we see it. And so, uh, with that being said, I'll start with mine. As well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, real simple. Uh, born in LA, uh, my folks. Mom is from Alabama. Um, dad is from Ohio. Uh, they met here in LA. We don't have to go deep into that, uh, but when. They divorced, I was around two years old. My mom moved me back to Alabama. So this is what, when when we think about how I got to this space, uh, just to give some background, my mom, um, who has made transition now, uh, man, man, a few years ago at this point, um, she was 5'11 and a half. <laughs> uh, I'm 6'1. Uh, and a half. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually six feet and three quarters, but I just round up to six one. Um, and so, what I being raised by her, um, basically nine months out of the year, um, and I spent my summers out here in California and Compton with my dad. Um, she was a dominant figure in my life. I had some great, great uncles, great men in my life, but the the woman in my household. Uh, she ruled with her iron fist. She was, yeah. So, and she was scary because she was 5'11 and a half and shit. So, around the time I, be, when I, around 13 or 14, she started dating my eventual stepdad. My stepdad, this, this dude was like 6'5. He was a huge cat, uh, which makes sense, right? Um, something shifted. So he would come over and she would be like, hey, baby, um, what, what, do you, what would you like to eat? Um, man, she'd be rubbing the shoulder and she'd be like, uh, want me to fix your plate, baby? Uh, you want me to run your bath for you? Da, da, da. And I was like, who the fuck is this woman? <laughs> this chick been banging on me for 13 years, man. I don't know this chick, right? And so the reason I bring up that example, and, and, I'll, and I'll dig into some more uh, uh, that connected to that, what, what that means. The reason I dig into that is because that shaped how, up to that point, I saw women a certain way. I had, I had a, 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 a single grandmother with five kids, five kids, four different dudes. And <laughs> so granny was the, the, the hammer in the family. Right. My my mother's two sisters, one of them who had happened to be the youngest, she's the the hammer, <laughs> you know, in, in their generation. She's mm -hmm. straight shooter, straight. I love her to death, man. Um, but we had these these really, really solid, dominant women in our family. And being in a household with my mom, she was a little more, she was a little softer than those two, mm -hmm. but in the house. She, she felt like she told me this um, later on when I was an adult. She told me, she said she felt like she had to be a certain way because I was a boy. Okay, I get that. Mm -hmm. um, so she ruled with an iron fist. So anyway, so I said that to say those women shaped how I saw women, right? It was like, so, and, and, and the men, my uncles, were, were some dope cats, right? My stepfather was a dope cat. I didn't appreciate him till later on, but that's another story. Well, these were some dope cats. And one thing that I saw this, oh, and even the pastor of our church when I was growing up, grew up Pentecostal, even the pastor of our church was a woman, right? So I didn't, was no big deal about women having uh, authority or control, was no big deal. I'm just like, oh, I see that shit all the time. Shit, even in my household growing up. But when I saw my mother with my stepdad, and this dude didn't even live with us for, for most of the time till after I was going off to college. Um, but he used to come and visit because he lived in Birmingham, it's like an hour away. Um, he used to come and visit. So the weekends, he was in, he was there in the house. She was a different 
woman. Mm -hmm. Changed my whole narrative about this dominant woman. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that works for them. And then I start peeping out my, my, my uncles and my aunt. So the other, my, my dominant figure aunt, mm -hmm. once I start unpacking conversation with her about her relationship with my uncle, she would say, oh yeah, I'm X, Y, and Z. But when he say, that's it, oh, that's it. You know, my cousins had, had some health issues, but my uncle worked still plant. <laughs> he made good money. My aunt didn't have to work. She did for, you know, she made a little side money or whatever. But he took care of everything. She wanted a new car. She got a new car. They had their own house. Uh, she wanted another house. She wanted a house. Well, they ain't want neighbors. So he bought a property. Or they, it was a house neighbor. They tore their house down. And it was their whole property, right? He provided like a motherfucker, right? So, and he was protected. When shit, when our house got robbed, when we was in the uh, projects, he showed up. My mom called him. He showed up with his tech nine. Was like, I got you, you know. So he was, a, you know, what I'm saying that was that dude. If you wasn't paying attention, you would say, you know, with my aunt, with how she got down, you would say, oh, well, she run that house. Nah, man. As a kid, you see one thing, but as an adult, you really got to dig into it and ask these questions, and examine. You know, these are influences in your life that bring you where you are and who you are. Mm -hmm. And to see them together change, to, to ask the questions and have the conversation with her change how I saw relationships. Mm -hmm. And then seeing my mother, you know, um, really change how I saw roles in the household. So I'm going to stop there and catch my breath. <laughs> no, nah, that's dope, man. Um, you don't mind me asking. Go ahead. Now you said your grandmama yeah. had yeah. four by three. She had five by four. Five by four. So um was Grandma chasing Streetwood? Bro, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to the realization that grandma was for the streets. Apparently. Before she, before she got saved. Before she became mother. Not just Mother Johnson before with the granny, white hat on. Before granny got saved. Before man. she got her spot in the third row. <laughs> she was for the streets. <laughs> oh, that's messed hey, you up. You know what? No, that's a, that's a man that shit and, right and there. And I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you, that's a that's a real question because I I hit my crack my mom about that. I was like, "Hey man, four dudes, huh?" I got, hey, <laughs> I got it on my side too. That's what it's like. Oh, grandma, you was fast on my mom. Like, yeah, grandma, what? grandma was getting it in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For you, was all the time she was loose lip Shirley. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, man. <clears throat> oh man. all right, cool, 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 cool. It should be illegal to have as much fun. It should be, it should be, and put it on film so everybody can see it. All right, cool. So, um, <clears throat> the, the, the next influence as I think about, um, uh, my manhood, my my connection to relationships was, I was a nerdy kid growing up. Mm -hmm. I was a nerdy, you know, growing up in Alabama. I'm the dark skinned kid, so I get nothing but all. I, I done heard every, damn near every dark skinned joke, but you keep coming up with new ones that it's I was a, like, It's man. a talent. <laughs> <laughs> For example, fingerprints on charcoal. Bro, that's, <laughs> that's classic. Yeah. <laughs> Which is my that's the name of his fantasy football, football team yeah. now to this day. <laughs> to this, I won't like, change it. Yeah, I was like, that boy, put fingerprints on charcoal. I won't change it. Get out that's the car and the oil light come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so not only was I the dark kid, I was the nerdy kid with the glasses. So I was that kid. Right. right? You so, still nerdy, you just took your glasses off. <clears throat> well, to that point, in 10th grade, um, I was out here actually, uh, came to live with my dad as I should have, you know, in high school. <clears throat> and uh, I was going to Cerritos High School and uh, I got contacts that year. I got contacts the summer before I started school. 
oh man, you know what I'm saying? I was on, I was a new kid on campus. I was on the hoop squad on JV, JV or the tenth grade squad. I think I was on the tenth grade squad. Uh, they ain't know me enough to get on JV. So, but anyway, he couldn't play. Go ahead. Hey, Ross, top scorer though. You know what I'm saying? That yeah, tall midget nigga. <laughs> That was a I was tall the, midget. I was the top scorer on the 10th grade, grade squad. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Cleveland. <laughs> Mid- <laughs> he, he's got a million. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, million, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you got a million. Go ahead. I, I, I scored 12 <laughs> points a game. So, um, so things changed, right? So they didn't know me, right? You know, I was fairly handsome cat, right? I thought, you know, I guess, but I didn't have that type of confidence yet. Mm -hmm. Um, Then I started getting some attention, you know, and it was kind of cool. Things shifted. I'm like, I'm the same motherfucker, right? I just don't have glasses anymore. Same personality, same looks, you know, same dress, how I affect, how I got down. But, you know, now I got into girls, right? And then I don't know. I, I think it was like at that point, my, the 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 novelty was off. I was like, man, I done been hanging around with you, man. My cousin, uh, my first cousin at the crib, uh, is super handsome dude, right? All the chicks, Doug. So they would talk to me, try to get close to him. Mm-hmm. So I had, I had I had an opportunity to talk to some fly ass chicks mm-hmm. with nothing on the table. So that kind of built my confidence. So by the time, you know what I'm saying, I it was me, I ain't had no problem talking to fly chicks. I was like, oh, oh, these chicks are crazy anyway. So uh-uh. you, you got a question. Uh-uh. <laughs> we, we've been boys for a long time. Some stuff just connected in my head. I got it. Uh, the talking. The, the, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. <laughs> yes. Now it's connected. Now, now it makes sense. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. Right. <laughs> so. Call your ass secondhand smoke. <laughs> That's what he is, or secondhand smoke, nigga. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and so, and then, what fucked up our generation, and and I'm a part of that is the love songs of the '80s and '90s. Um, uh, what Babyface, um, all them cats messed it up mm-hmm. for our generation. Uh, I'll pay your rent, I'll buy your clothes, I'll cook your dinner too as soon as I get home from work. Um, uh, I'll do everything your man won't do. Well, you know, you. but on the flip side of it, you, you should give a lot of credit to Guy because you're Aaron Hall looking now. <laughs> hey, big up to the dark skin dudes. You know so, what I'm saying? That bro, when they come out 90, <laughs> you got yeah, about 89, 90, he was on a hell of a run. Hell of a run. You know? actually, actually, Big Daddy King. Oh, uh, that's help good. me out. Omar Epps, you know, helped me out on my run. So, you know, so, well, he ain't too dumb, but you know. Uh, yeah, but Big Daddy Kane was a big, big part of that. And the Black Power music of the time, you know. X Clan. X Clan. Freedom or death. <laughs> we shall all be moved. Van Glorious. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man. So, the music of the day, Paris, uh, uh, you know, Public Enemy. Uh, all that. So all this was happening at the same time. You had the Black Power, but the, but the love songs dominated by mostly guys. Well, the ones that were dominated by mostly guys was simp shit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was a simp. I ended up being a simp for a little while. And that kind of fucked up my relationship. So I, I can reflect back and say my early relationships were shitty because mm-hmm. I was simping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to pause right there. Get no, I caught question. you on the tail end of that simping. That's when we became friends. <laughs> this nigga was R&B. <laughs> like, Damn, I'm making a whole love song over here. <laughs> hey, man, we talking about, you know, take the chick out. We talking about flowers. We talking about, you know, the whole nine. I mean, everything. Side note, just a quick side note. So, uh, my daughter has a guy that liked her, right? Likes her. And so, her mom, I won't give too much, you know, personal stuff, but her mom was like, 
well, he should, I know kids that have brought flowers and did this. And I was like, you know, eighth, ninth graders bringing flowers. What are you talking about? Right. And so we was having a conversation. I said, no, you want to be respected. You want to be treated uh, uh, with dignity. Mm -hmm. You know, you want him to be interested in you. I was like, forget all the flowers and all that crap, right? And then I, I, it hit me of the training right, that we go through. Right. Like, this is the way to be. So I was having, I was telling my mom the story. And my mom was like, oh, flowers are nice. And da, 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 da. I was like, did my daddy give you flowers on the first date? She was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, I was, <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Right. I was like, the dude you married isn't that dude. <laughs> Had two kids by. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, anyway, I just it just hit me. I was like, anyway. Anyway. Written, so, by, written by Disney. Right. Well, and, and the one thing, there were there some, <clears throat> there were some, uh, some shine, some bright moments as I reflect on that I didn't follow up on. Mm. So, for instance. Shoot, man, my last junior senior, year, junior, senior year, junior senior year, freshman year in college, I went to about four or five proms. I only paid for like one. Mm -hmm. And paid for is, you know, I put that in air quotes because uh, I was working at I probably wouldn't, but anyway. So, but these, the, 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 the women, the girls, they paid for it. Mm -hmm. Parents paid for it. Old parents' cars, you know, back and forth. And I didn't even click into that then. Like, damn, I'm the prize. So now, 49 years old. Mm -hmm. um, that, and, and there's a lot that happened in between. I'm just saying that <clears throat> to bring me to this journey now, when we talk about the shift in what we're doing and what we're lifting up is we want to shift the narrative of black men. Uh, we want to shift and add and, and let people know who we are as we come into this conversation. But when I come into this conversation talking about, um, about relationships, and I am a relationship coach, I'm a life coach, I'm all that um, consultant, um, when we talk about relationships, I got to at least be honest about where I came from in that journey. And so even now, the struggles with, with my wife, we've been together 24 years, the struggles with her as I look back on with two things, A, me not standing and being in my, on my purpose, mm -hmm. on my vision, mm -hmm. on my values, on my guiding principles, and standing on my square. Yes, sir. And her being out of order, as Iyanla would say. <laughs> so those two things were disastrous for our relationship. Mm -hmm. So as we start coming into, as I start coming into who I am and what I'm about, I shit start to shift because um, I start to say, hey, listen, this is who I am. This is what this should, this is what this going to be. This, here's the program. <laughs> and, and if you don't like it, I mean, this is the program and we're going to make a commitment. We've made this commitment and I'm committed to being my best self and I'm committed to this vision of our legacy of our family. Well, you know. What what comes into my mind is, you know, I've had a front row seat for a lot of your know, twenty four years, but it's 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 uh, the 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 learning how to dance together. Mm. You know, Fred Astaire could dance his ass off, but he was much doper with Ginger Rogers. But it wouldn't work if Ginger wanted to lead Ooh. the dance moves. Right, right. They were magic on camera. You ever seen two people dance and they both try to lead? Oh, that's a disaster. That's a monkey fucking the football is what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> and so we we have these relationships where people are like, oh no, we're we're uh we're partners. Mm -mm. No, we're not. Nah. I'm going to lead. Right. And I'm gonna lay this out. They're probably upset some people. Whatever, I don't care. Here's the aspects of leadership, okay? Number one, first of all, in order to lead, you first must be able to follow. Mm. Yes. Okay? You have to be able to take orders and execute for one day to lead. Mm -hmm. Under my, my uncles, 
under my mentors, the men who helped raise me, I followed them. I learned how to follow leadership. Right. Right. Number two, the leader is the first to take the blame. Absolutely. The leader is the one that says my bad. Now, I don't know this. We don't have a data point and I have not done the research, but it is my opinion that my bad was not created by a woman. I think that was a man that said that first. Now, you might want to do a uh, deal. You can go look in the, in the uh, archives. You know what I'm saying? It might be uh, Butch Jenkins is credited. <laughs> as I'm not, the, I'm not as so the, sure. That's the first one to say my bad, right? I'm not so sure. Yeah, the toothpick coming out of the side of his mouth. He's in the railroad track with some overalls. He's like, my bad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, my bad, dog. <laughs> but you have to stand out front and take the slings and arrows. OK, it's no different than you'll see a, a coach or a quarterback mm -hmm. after the game and a quarterback played a great game and he'll go or the coach coached a great game, had a get great game plan. And somebody messed up and he'll go. It was my fault. I didn't have them prepared. Right. Everybody saw the game. Right. Everybody saw what it was. But the leader steps out and takes the slings and arrows and takes the pressure off the team. Yeah. OK, so that's number two about leadership. So if you're a person that would rather be caught dead than dead wrong, you can't lead. Mm -hmm. All right. Number three, I was raised in a family full of what we would call quote unquote strong women. And all of the, those strong women that I was raised by, and you've been around Mama don't take no mess. Uh -huh. They require strong male leadership. Yes. One of the, the, the falsehoods is, I'm too strong. That's why you can't handle me. No. Strength requires strength. Mm. What you're projecting is ego and weakness. Yes. It's not strength, it's a headache. Mm -hmm. And people would rather just take some ibuprofen and walk away from your ass. Yeah. Advil on deck and I'm out. I did not say ibuprofen correctly, but don't worry about that part. Yeah, it's okay. All right. <laughs> and, and to your point, um, having this conversation yesterday with one, with one of my guys, <clears throat> he was, uh, Talking about his relationship, um, he's gonna get married. It ain't work out. Mm -hmm. Some red flags, and but he's he was still, you know, trying to figure out. He's man, if she could do X, Y, and Z, man, we could work this out. Similar situation, raised by a single mom. You know, so heard hit heard his mom and and her friends talk shit about men. And I was like, wow, man, how'd that make you feel as a young boy growing up to hear them talk about not needing you, <laughs> right? Yeah. And he was like, yo, man, I'm in therapy now for that shit. I was like, wow, right? So there are no, uh, uh, there aren't, there are no such thing as two pilots. There's a pilot and a co-pilot. No such thing as two presidents. <laughs> no such thing as two coaches. <laughs> No such thing as two point guards. <laughs> Spock wasn't like, hey, Kirk, get your ass out the chair. Right. I, my ship now. I got this. Oh, we got this. Right. <laughs> no, no, no such thing as two CEOs. All right. Yes. So, you know, it's it's about playing a role. And for the women, our women out there who say, no, we both can lead. I say when the door get kicked in, you leading with me to protect this house? <laughs> well, you know, here's, here's a, I think we have a, 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 a huge gap of um, a, a misunderstanding mm. about what leadership is. Um, and I think, I think what sometimes people do is project how they lead onto other people. Mm -hmm. Selfish people don't care about other folks. Right. But 
the fourth thing, because I said uh, three other things, but the fourth thing about leadership is you pretty much put yourself last. Yeah. Your care and concern is about everyone else. Absolutely. You know, and then you're last. You tell the story of your uncle working all those hours at a factory. And if if I'm correct, he's passed. Yep. And your aunt's still alive. Yes. Well, that's the story of Big Daddy. Yep. Granddaddy worked in the factory sucking on asbestos for 40 years or yep. worked at the post office on the docks yep. and worked painting and did this and did that. And typically he died early. And then Big Mama was up in the house mm -hmm. and she was doing her job, but she lived longer. Mm -hmm. And so now we as family look at Big Mama, Oda Legacy and Big Mama House and we have in Thanksgiving. But it was Big Daddy that worked his ass off. Right. As the leader to provide. To me, fair exchange, no robbery. Mm -hmm. We had an understanding back then. Okay. Now, of course, these are modern times and you need <clears throat> we in LA, man. Shoot, everybody got a damn work. You know, you gotta pay six hundred thousand dollars to live next to a crib. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it ain't cheap out here, you know. But there there are there are roles to make the team work. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have an epidemic. Manhood is at an all time low. Right. So, of course, we're an anomaly sometimes with the way we speak and how we carry ourselves. But we're the elixir mm. to what ails us. Yeah. If you want to conquer a people and it goes back to all the ancient wars. You take the men out, you kill them. Right. And then you pull in the women and children. And that's been the game plan. And we are steadily being taken out. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's time. I always say, say real, real niggas got the ball now. It's time for us men to stand up and be men. Love it. I love it. And, <clears throat> and just speaking on that big daddy narrative, you're absolutely right. And the the thing that there's two things that hurt uh, the Big Daddy narrative. Uh, a to your point, nobody talked about Big Daddy with reverence, so he wasn't respected. So they didn't carry that respect or that reverence for that man and what he did, what he provided, and 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 provided. Just they didn't even talk about the protection provided mm -hmm. for that family for those generations of family. And then we had our, our mothers would have seen Big Daddy. <laughs> our mothers and grandmothers would have seen, our mothers would have seen Big Daddy get taken care of by, by Big Mama. Mm -hmm. like, like I saw my, my stepdad getting taken care of by, by my mom, where I as a young boy said, wow, that's the way it's supposed to be. A young girl may see that and say, mm, she doing too much for him. Side note, side note. It's the reason uh, uh, I don't do disclaimers. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why I don't dis do disclaimers and it popped in my head when you said it, because I know somebody is going to watch this and what you just said, the girl said, oh, she's doing too much or, uh, well, not everybody's like this as if everybody's like anything. Right. Here's why I don't do disclaimers. Was there a disclaimer in the beginning of the color purple to say that all black men aren't like Mr. Oof. Oof. Wait next hell. So we didn't need a disclaimer? Wait next hell for she burnt the BMW up? <laughs> Not all black women will a torch set fire to your car. With, so disclaimers are projections. Mm. So I'm going to, because I'm going to uh, anticipate, right, your reaction, and I'm going to soothe you ahead of time. No, I want you to feel the conversation. I want you to feel everything, and then we can have a discussion. So I don't do disclaimers. I don't water down what I say. What I told you earlier, weaker than circus lemonade. <laughs> I, love I don't water it down, right, and then we can talk, all right? Bring your full self to the conversation and I'm going to bring my full self and let's really hash it out. Yep. Right. Let everybody stand on a square and be heard. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and with that uh, erasure of Big Daddy, you know, you get generations that, that don't really know, uh, understand that relationship between those two people. Mm-hmm. They don't understand the give and take between those two people. Don't understand the agreements between those two people. Mm-hmm. Don't understand the advantages that Big Mama got from the the protection and the provisions of Big Daddy. Right? Like you said, Big Mama's the only one left. They was in a full relationship. Full relationship. And, and, and what we tend to do is take bits and pieces of what we saw or try to create a, a narrative again to soothe ourselves mm-hmm. about their relationship. Mm-hmm. Only those two people know the depth and fullness of that relationship. Okay. So you're just seeing a piece of an elephant. Right. And trying to describe it. Right. Right. Instead of appreciating what commitment looks like. Instead of appreciating what hard work and dedication looks like. Mm. Instead of appreciating what a real relationships look like between human beings, because it's not perfect, right? I trip off of people. This look, look, I can only listen to perfection. Wow. So if you can only listen to perfection, right? You say something, well, look at you, you did this, and oh, look at that person. That, oh, so you mean they're human? If you can only listen to perfection, then you can't even listen to yourself. Mm. You can't sit and meditate and and listen to your own spirit because you're not perfect. So by your standards, only Jesus could take the will. (laughs) Right. And, you know, I mean, listen, I've been on this planet, you know, I'm I'm a few years short of 50. And he ain't hopped in the passenger seat for me yet. (laughs) I'll drive in the car. <laughs> so if that's the only person that you can listen to, and then here's what we do, mm. then we manipulate even the stuff that's in that book Man. to suit ourselves. Man. Right? So the person that you're listening to isn't perfect, which is you, and you're the biggest liar in your own damn life. Line to the person in the mirror. So we typically go with data and statistics, and we don't have any for this um, on purpose, but I did an informal uh, survey. Ladies, and I, you know, again, I rarely give ladies any advice. I believe it's, it's men, it's inside, it's inside out, it's an inside job. But ladies, uh, 100% of your single friends are single. I think that's some pretty solid data. Yeah, you know, and I, don't, I you know, I have to go to the <laughs> Pew Center for that one. <laughs> and I've noticed something in my life, and, and 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 I don't know if you have. When guys see their boy that has a really good woman, guys are the first ones to be like, "Hey, man, don't mess that up." No, you got a good one. Mm-hmm. I don't see women do that, mm. and maybe I missed it. Maybe there's going to be comments and a woman will say, no, no, we support each other. But I'm saying as a group, right. okay, again, previous rant. Don't tell me about your Uncle Charlie. What about 80% of us? Yeah. What about what do we do as a people? Are we supportive of relationships? Mm-hmm. I believe if you go to your girlfriends and talk about your relationship, they will advise you to break up. Your single auntie that's been by herself for 40 years will invi- advise you to break up and take you cat shopping. You, you'll be at the Sunday brunch with the eight women with the sun dresses and hats. Yeah. I have seen, I have seen it. Um, I, I, you know, I, I can't pull research out, out of my behind on it, but I've just seen it and I've witnessed it. I've seen it in your relationship. I've seen what people have done to try to tear down your situation. I experienced it in my marriage. Mm-hmm. What people did to try to tear down our situation, which eventually did get torn down, <laughs> you know, and it came from places that were so close to me mm. that I would have never thought 
that it would come from. Wow. That I thought were my supporters turned out to be advocates for this type of destruction and failure. Mm. Right? And so when we talk of our origins and we talk of our philosophies, these are the things that we talk about. These, these are things that men experience that we don't say out loud. Right. Right. And we may have conversations amongst us private. You might tell your boy, you know, maybe tell your mama, you know, but it stops right there. Yeah. On the flip side of it, stuff happens to women and our women have been taught to be a lot more expressive. They'll like, you know, they have a bad relationship. They're going to have to do this picture on CNN. They're going to be like, uh, don't fuck with Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Go have his picture up. <laughs> that nigga ain't shit. <laughs> 6 p.m. Travis ain't shit. So, <laughs> Don Lemon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don Lemon with his caked on makeup. <laughs> Looking like Reby Jackson. <laughs> Centipede ass nigga. <laughs> Impromptu second shit. Right Impromptu second shit. <laughs> So, no, <laughs> go ahead. No, 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 I was gonna say the 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 last thing we want to hit on that, that I want to bring up is <clears throat> this the narrative of uh, and I know yeah, people have it, it's been out now where you know Kevin Samuels has broken down you know he's talking about for men what do men want right what do men want the narrative is always out there about what women want and they have their standards and that's cool they should <laughs> um, the the opposite is also true. Men, we have our stands. We know what we want, right? And <clears throat> it's interesting how he boiled it down to fit, feminine, and cooperative or agreeable, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, which is an and, and a cooperative and agreeable piece uh, before cats would say submission, right? Mm -hmm. And the negative narrative around submission didn't come from guys. Right, it came from women like, oh, you submit, Ugh. all the negative shit to go in with that. <clears throat> but here's what the conversation that that I was having about submission the other day, like submission is actually uh, it, it, it's it's an empowering position. Why? Because if I am, if you got a pilot and a co-pilot, the pilot still the co-pilot still advises the pilot. And he number one advisor, <laughs> exact the number one advisor, and he takes in all of the information that the co-pilot is giving him. Say, listen, storm front here, da 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 da. So when decisions are made, that the co-pilot's words are taken in consideration. It's not like I'm just gonna make a decision despite what you're saying and what. And there's some great information coming from that. There's necessary information coming from the co-pilot that makes this plane. Fly safely. Two things on submission. Number one, uh, I've been a father. My oldest, I've been a father since I was 21 years old. I, I have uh, two children, well, one adult. <laughs> I've submitted to the to to what was best for them mm. since mm. they were born. Submission sometimes is a greater purpose. Absolutely. The course of my family, um, I took serious about breaking, breaking certain uh, bad patterns and, and, and legacies. Um, I wanted to stop. I wanted to be the last one. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to hand it to my son. I submitted to that and it caused great introspection mm -hmm. and huge self-growth. Number two, there are no more Christian people in the United States than black folks. Hmm. Submission is a biblical principle. For all y'all good uh, church going folks on Sundays, stop picking and choosing how you want to be. Hmm. Submission is if, if you're a person of faith, you have to have practiced submission. Hmm. You submit to the will of God. So why is submission a bad thing? Oh, because God is perfect again. Because mm. Jesus takes the wheel. 
But I want somebody that loves me through my imperfections, but I can't submit to an imperfect person. Wow. Do you see how out of balance you'll be? Do you, do you maybe now realize why you don't have somebody? Biscuit. Hmm. Yeah, and on that note, <laughs> that seems like a good place to to wind it down. Um, thank you, brother, for for uh, helping me walk through this conversation and and lay this out. Um, we, we'll get opportunities to to weave in more of our origin stories. And I'm pretty sure you get a chance to share yours. Rennie gets a chance to share his. <laughs> Rennie's going to talk about how he became French. <laughs> uh, Dio would tell his origin story. He's still living. He's 17. But, uh, <laughs> Looking like a six heartbeat. Hey, let's do shy, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but listen. Rennie sleeps with a, a do-rag like Morse Day in Purple Rain. Go ahead. That's funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's what your ass gift for not being here. That's hilarious. But uh, listen, um, we got, hey, logos is here, Skitty Black's Lounge. We got gear, merchandise coming, uh, some sweatsuits. It'd be cool, uh, which is crazy because we're going in the summer. But we have some t-shirts and caps too. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh, so support the channel. Uh, and you can support the channel by commenting. Like this works best when we engage. So your comments um, uh, gives uh, us opportunities to to sharpen, you know, uh, what we're saying gets to get us an opportunity to clarify what we're saying. So please comment, um, share, subscribe. Um, yeah, man. And so until next Wait, time. Hold on, hold on. Oh, before okay. we before we before we uh, go ahead, get out of here. I want to be clear about something. It's on my spirit. We're transparent. We're not perfect. Uh, we're not the oracles sitting around the table with all the answers. We share our life experiences. We do research. We study. We share data. We're about the conversation and the interaction. Yes. So if you're looking for the perfect person, you're not in the right space. Nope. But if you're looking for human beings that are walking through life and attempting to become their best selves, mm -hmm. you're in the right spot. Yes. If, you're, if you are curious as a woman to understand your man or men in general, you're in the right spot. Yes. If you're looking for a fight, I'm not going to fight with you. If you believe it is or it isn't, you're absolutely right. What you will not hear from me is I believe because I'm not set in anything. Mm -hmm. I say I think. Mm -hmm. Occasionally I'll say I feel. Mm -hmm. I will not say I believe because I am open to change <clears throat> with new and profound information. Yes, sir. So the question is, are you? And if you're not, you're stuck and you might as well lay down in the dirt and die now. Because what doesn't evolve dies. Absolutely. Have you seen the T-Rex walking down Crenshaw lately? They didn't evolve. They died. So we are about upliftment. We're about advancement. And hell yeah, we're going to have a good time. No and I'm going to crack jokes. I'm funny as hell. Okay? You are funny. Okay. And then you might get a your mama in the comments if you say something wrong. <laughs> be like, your mama. Okay. <laughs> Old loose lip Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> your mama invented the Slurpee before 7 Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> they owe her reparations. 7 Eleven oh, owe your mama goodness. reparations. Oh my goodness. Hey, listen. Comment, like, share, subscribe. Skinny Blacks Lounge. Thank you. We appreciate you. Be your best self. We out.
beautiful part about sucking shit mm-hmm. is 9.99 out of 10. I don't see that shit coming. <laughs> Me neither. There's a point oh one percent that you know where I'm coming from. I know you didn't get. I, I, I know. I think I know where this is going. It's going somewhere else. I know that LA Classic messed you up. You're like, wait a minute. Hold on. QBC. That's what I was, I'm telling you. That QBC was a nice little tee up, though. That's a nice little tee up. Man, that's how we think life works. Hey, man. And it's, you think you just, it's going to work out just like that? He ain't on QVC. They don't sell men. And, and it ain't raining, man, either. Mm-mm. Oh. Damn, I ain't see that over there. Sorry. That's good. Oh. My old days, I <clears throat> just took it. My bike, punk. I ain't Debo. I'm saying. 